Oculus Air Link is now officially here. It's a free feature from Oculus that allows you to play PC VR content from your gaming PC completely wirelessly using the Oculus Quest 2. And this means you don't have to worry about getting tangled up using Oculus Link cables anymore. Now, this functionality isn't really anything new. Wireless PC VR streaming has been available on the original Quest and Quest 2 for some time as part of an application called Virtual Desktop. And honestly, using the Quest 2 with Virtual Desktop has become my favorite way to play PC VR content, even when compared to using headsets like the Valve Index or the HP Reverb G2, purely for the fact that it's wireless. So now that Oculus are offering their own wireless PC VR streaming functionality for free with Oculus Air Link, I'll be showing you what equipment you need to take advantage of this new feature, how to get it set up, and then I'll be comparing it side by side to test the performance against the much loved virtual desktop. I'll be talking more about my thoughts on the pros and cons of both Air Link and virtual desktop at the end of the video. Timestamps have been added as always. I hope you find the video useful, and without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so first off, let me start by going through what equipment you'll need to get Oculus Air Link set up. Of course, you'll need an Oculus Quest 2, as Oculus Air Link isn't compatible with the original Quest at the time of this video, and honestly, I'm not sure if it's going to get official support in the future. You'll also need a Windows 10 gaming PC running an Intel i5 4590 or AMD Ryzen 1500X processor or greater. You'll also need 8GB of RAM and at minimum a GTX 970 or AMD 400 series graphics card. These are the same system requirements as if you were using a cabled connection for Oculus Link and I've added my own system specs in the description below if you're interested. The key difference with Air Link is that you'll need a good quality 5 GHz Wi-Fi connection from your headset to your router for the best possible performance. The location of your router needs to be as close to your VR play space as possible and connected to your gaming PC using an Ethernet cable. Now this doesn't have to be the main router in your household and can be a secondary router just for this setup. I've added some links to some routers which should work great in the description down below with a few options depending on your budget. Shout out to Guy from Virtual Desktop for the excellent suggestions. With the equipment out of the way, now let's move on to the software which you'll need to get up and running. To enable Oculus Air Link, you'll need to have both version 28 installed on your Oculus Quest 2 and in the Oculus Desktop application. You can find out what version number you're on in the settings menu. Once you have both updates in the desktop application, you'll need to enable Air Link under the beta tab in the settings menu. And just note that you'll need to do this every time you restart your PC. Then you'll also need to enable Air Link in the Quest 2 headset, which can be found under the system menu under experimental settings. Thankfully, you only need to do this once. With both settings enabled, you should see the Air Link option in the Quest 2's quick start menu, where you'll be able to pair the headset to your PC, and then you're pretty much good to go. Once Air Link has started, it'll take you straight to the Oculus dashboard, where you can launch your Oculus games. If you want to change the bitrate settings, you can find them using the button on the far left of the menu. If you want to play a game from Steam, you'll need to take the headset off to start Steam VR from your desktop, unless you add a shortcut to your Oculus library. But once you've played a Steam VR game using Link, it'll appear in your recent games list, so thankfully, you won't have to do this every time. And now let's get on to the fun part, testing both Oculus Air Link and Virtual Desktop side by side with some PC VR games from both Steam and Oculus. Now for this comparison, I'll be showing you footage captured directly from the Quest 2 to show you the streaming performance I experienced in the headset. Just bear in mind the Quest's video capture compression does crush the visual quality somewhat, and in both cases it looked better in the headset than it does in the recording. To make this a fair test, I set both Air Link and Virtual Desktop to 130 megabits per second bitrate in their respective settings. And now getting into the gameplay, let's start with Lone Echo. With the sequel releasing on PC this summer, I thought it was a great time to go back and recap the story of Captain Olivia Rhodes and Jack. The performance of the game was indistinguishable between the two methods, although looking back at the recorded outputs, Virtual Desktop's image looks a little bit warmer, even after I'd turned off the vibrancy setting in Virtual Desktop's menu. Despite being four years old, this game still stands today as one of the most visually impressive VR games available, and I'd highly recommend it if you haven't played it already. 
Next up was Against, a new take on the music rhythm genre with nightmarish action set in a 1930s noir New York. The game is in early access, so it has limited content right now, but it was pretty fun nevertheless. This game was running from Steam, and again, performance using both Air Link and Virtual Desktop was great. And honestly, if I had to take a blind Pepsi challenge between Air Link and Virtual Desktop, I think I would struggle to tell them apart. Next up was the Oculus version of Medal of Honor. In all my tests, I was getting on average between 35 and 50 milliseconds of latency using both applications. But just bear in mind that the latency numbers in the performance overlay in Virtual Desktop isn't an apples to apples comparison to the performance overlay in the Oculus Debug tool. They both record latency numbers a little bit differently, hence why I haven't shown them in this video. But with high-end games like Medal of Honor, I think Oculus Air Link might have the slight advantage as it can use ASW, which stands for Asynchronous Space Warp, which isn't available when using Virtual Desktop. ASW essentially smooths out slight dips in frame rate, which overall will make the gameplay feel smoother to play. This will be particularly useful with those on low and mid-range spec systems. And finally, one of my all-time favorite VR games, Half-Life Alex. Again, no surprises here, and it ran very well using both methods. I also monitored my system's CPU and GPU performance whilst running all of these tests, and there was very little difference between the two. It's kind of crazy to think that three years ago, I was testing out accessories to make PC VR headsets wireless, like the TPCast for the original Rift and the Vive wireless adapter for the HTC Vive and Vive Pro. Those accessories alone cost roughly the same amount as a brand new Oculus Quest 2 now, which has this functionality built in for free. It's pretty incredible to see how far we've come in a relatively short amount of time. So here's my conclusion. Overall, in my experience, there was very little difference between Air Link and Virtual Desktop in terms of visual performance and latency whilst playing games from both Oculus and Steam. The three key advantages of using Air Link is that it can use ASW, which will help smooth out slight dips in frame rate. You have the ability to use Oculus Mirror, which will be useful for streamers and those who want to make VR video content. And the big one, of course, is that it's free and built into the Oculus system software. The four key advantages of Virtual Desktop is that it has more settings for granular adjustment for those who want to tweak the performance. It can launch the SteamVR environment directly from within the application. It's fully compatible with the original Quest and it supports 120 Hertz mode on the Quest 2, which Air Link doesn't do at the time of this video. If you're interested in 120 Hertz mode, I'll be talking more about the games that support it natively on the Quest 2 in a separate video in the near future. For me personally, I'll probably end up using both methods for different use cases, but I'm really happy now that I'll be able to use Air Link instead of using the link cable for recording gameplay on the channel, as I'll have access to Oculus Mirror completely wirelessly. Okay, so that is Oculus Air Link, a great free new feature from Oculus for the Quest 2. I always kind of felt that it was inevitable that they were eventually going to release a wireless PC VR streaming feature, although I have to say I didn't expect to see it until the next generation headset, and I thought that they would probably release their own wireless dongle or adapter as an optional accessory so they could have full control over the quality of the streaming themselves instead of relying on third party routers. I guess that could still happen in the future. But overall, I'm happy that it's here and I think it's great that more people will get to experience what wireless PC VR has to offer. Like I said at the beginning of the video, it's my favorite way to play PC VR content. And as you'll probably know, I'm a big fan of Virtual Desktop and I do feel for Guy Godin, the developer, as he's been working hard on refining the wireless PC VR streaming functionality of Virtual Desktop for years now. And I think what's sad about this situation isn't that Oculus have created their own wireless streaming functionality and offered it for free, but the fact that they were previously so dismissive about how useful it was, and even went so far as to actively block Virtual Desktop's PC VR streaming patch from being on the official store up until just a few months ago. I still totally recommend Virtual Desktop as it's still a great option for wireless PC VR streaming to the original Quest and of course the Quest 2, with the additional functionality of being able to access your PC remotely with some stunning environments, and it will soon have local and remote video playback functionality for both flat and VR video content coming soon in the future. 
But of course, that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you have access to version 28 yet? Have you tried Oculus Air Link? How do you think it compares to virtual desktop? I'd love to know in the comments down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and you found it useful. Make sure you're subscribed for all my future VR content. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.